Last week, Major General Qasem Soleimani was killed in a U.S. airstrike when traveling in a convoy to Baghdad. He was 62, and friends and family mourned that he had so many lives left to take. <laughs> After the death of Soleimani, actress Rose McGowan took to Twitter to apologize to the people of Iran, saying the U.S. had, quote, disrespected your country, your flag, and your people. Who would have guessed 20 years ago that the most normal down-to-earth sister on Charmed would be Shannon Doherty? <laughs> Iran Supreme, Iran, Iran Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei has called for direct attack on American interests, and the head of Iran's Revolutionary Guard vows to set ablaze U.S. allies. This actually has nothing to do with the killing of Soleimani. It was just Tuesday. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a better joke if I had read it right. <laughs> Anti-war protests broke out in major U.S. cities across the country in response to the Trump administration's actions in Iraq and Iran. More protests will soon break out as soon as every basic white lady realizes that protesting will clock in about 1,200 Fitbit steps. (laughs) (laughs) Earlier today, Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden said that President Trump's escalation of tensions with Iran proves him to be dangerously incompetent as opposed to Biden, who proudly declared himself as harmlessly incompetent, mostly. <laughs> uh, Republican Congressman uh, Paul. Paul Gosar defended the fake photoshopped image he tweeted of Obama shaking hands with Iranian President Rouhani, saying uh, he saying he never intended for people to think that it was real. He also says that he is dating a supermodel, but you don't know her because she lives in Canada. Fox has announced that they're developing The Masked Dancer, which will capitalize on the success of The Masked Singer, a show that has become so popular that the guy in the peacock suit is pulling ahead of Elizabeth Warren. (laughs) A crew of California-based firefighters are heading to Australia to help battle the country's out-of-control wild wildfires. Uh, They are heading to help Australia due to their experience battling wildfires and also to their experience posing for sexy calendars. Despite her claims that her campaign is simply regrouping, the former campaign manager to Marianne Williamson has confirmed that her entire campaign staff has been fired. Apparently, they weren't satisfied after months of being paid in good vibes and hugs. (laughs) Pope Francis apologized for slapping away the hand of a woman who grabbed him during a, uh, in a receiving line during New Year's Eve. Uh, for inappropriate grabbing, the woman has officially been hired at Fox News. Oh. And finally, the death toll from a measles epidemic in Congo has surpassed 6,000. But fortunately, not a single one of them was diagnosed as autistic. The Trump Report starts now. <laughs> I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Yes, welcome to 2020. Welcome to the Trump Report. I'm Christian Black, joined by Chelsea Galicia. Yes, hi. Tamara Happy Brown. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, I'm not quite sure where he is, but my understanding from a series of texts is that Scott Moore is has a meeting with Joe the Plumber, who people might remember from the 2008 campaign, or maybe an actual plumber. I really, I, I don't know. But uh, hopefully we will uh, see him back next week. And uh, just at the top of the show, speaking of next week, uh, Stay tuned to figure out exactly when we're going to do this. I think we're going to do it Tuesday night uh, after the debate, uh, which I'm very excited for that debate. So only... I'm already tired of debates. Oh, I, I, I was, like, I... but then I heard there are only going to be five candidates. And I was like, all right, that's my kind of debate. When we get down to, you know, when there's like two or three, then we're really talking. It feels like, didn't we just have a debate? Oh, we did. And then there's like another one at the beginning of February. But, you know, at some point the debates have to end. At some point the campaign has to end. But uh, there's so much to come. I, I did want to start with uh, the, uh, you know, it's an interesting thing when the new year starts and, uh, you know, that New Year's Day, we all kind of ease into things. But then on January 2nd, you look at Twitter and you're like, wait, why is World War Three trending exactly? And, you know, then you start to click through and you go like, all right. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, look. We had some fun with uh, with uh, with Major General uh, Suleimani there at the top of the show. Uh, I think uh, not really a good guy, but uh, from a, a strategic standpoint, was it a good idea to uh, take him out while he's you know hanging out at the airport with a drone strike? I know how much 
Chelsea likes drone strikes. I'm sure you felt like it was a good idea, right? I'm, I'm speaking for you, but only because I'm so sure After that's how you feel. After all these years now together, <laughs> you know me so well. Yeah, that's exactly how you feel about it, right? right. And, and I think that the... the the ballistic missile strikes at the... Um, oh, yeah, you were telling me about this. I actually yes. didn't know this happened about at, yeah, about half an hour ago now, yes, right? Yeah. At, the, at, a, at a U.S. base in Iraq has been hit by at least 10 rockets. Um, so yeah, you wouldn't expect yeah, you wouldn't expect Iran to take fantastic. something personally and retaliate. You know, it just it's just not in their nature. Well, and and I hear everybody saying this guy was a bad guy. Sure. And I... I believe that he did kill many Americans and therefore can be safely called a bad guy. At the same time, he was also a big fighter against ISIS. So I understand it according to an interview I heard with the U uh, Iranian ambassador to the UN that ISIS is actually celebrating what the United States did in killing Soleimani. Mm -hmm. So um, we have to not get too one-sided about the narrative like oh this was a bad guy i mean only in tv and movies is somebody a clear-cut right. good guy and bad guy exactly in the real world and also we're multifaceted <laughs> yeah and and what and what did the united states do um whatever previous attacks were placed in the united states you know we weren't just whistling on our way to church with our hands you know, folded behind our backs. Like we, yeah. There was there was a lot of bad guys and a lot of like could be bad. But w was that a good idea? I would say unequivocally, no. It was not a good idea well, at all. And now it's making things. And worse. and you know, the good and the bad guys are all relevant to the timeline you're in. You know, there were times that we as a country were very friendly with both Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden. You know, there were times where that's what made sense for us. So, uh, and I. I don't know that uh, I, I believe that uh, this was someone who had, you know, had business in the United States before. Uh, you know, I think that uh, he was seen as somebody who was helping. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, basically not looking out for uh, American interests, but it was uh, obviously. But I, I, I guess the At some point the, he had similar uh, enemies. I, I, that's just to say, at some point there were common enemies. Right. And I, I guess that uh, that's no longer the case. Uh, Tamara, I wanted to kind of get your thoughts on uh, there's this this notion out there. It depends on who you believe that uh, this uh, that Soleimani was very close to uh, you know an attack on uh, Americans, I believe, in uh, Iraq, and that's why he needed to be taken out when he did. Uh, if you had to give like just a percentage, like how likely do you think it is that that's the case? I mean, that's hard to say. What's in, what is worth pointing out is how um, Trump is suddenly in favor of the intelligence community. That's you the know, first like thing he that occurred has, to me he too. Has never, he has been slandering the intelligence agencies um, as long as he's been office uh, and dismissing crucial pieces of intelligence that have come in. And, you know, suddenly this is the one where he's like, well, intelligence says it was going to happen, so we can't just sit we, idly by. We, yeah, you would think that the intelligence community were pollsters. You know, he always is like, oh, the polls are always so wrong. The polls are the worst. The polls are terrible. Hey, 60 percent of Republicans like me or, you know, whatever. I'm just picking a number. But when he sees one he likes. Yeah. Uh, I thought that the most interesting part of uh, the narrative was the focus on the fact that while this strike was carried out, uh, President Trump was eating meatloaf and ice cream. And, uh, you that know, was the most interesting thing. Well, because it was like very large headlines. Then, and there was like a, you know, look, I do really, I love the photo that he was taking a bite of, I believe it was the meatloaf and not the ice cream. But also, look, don't rule out for this man meatloaf flavored ice cream because. <laughs> Yeah, have you had it? I haven't, so I'm not going to knock it. He but eats like a 72-year-old man <laughs> at old at hometown buffet. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean it's the soft foods. Yeah, really. I mean except for the KFC, mm -hmm. but uh, that night. But you know, so it was just the idea was like, oh, so that's where it's at. But like, let's not forget what President Obama was doing when SEAL Team Six was taking out uh, taking out Osama bin Laden. He was at the White House Correspondents' Dinner, killing 
Well, literally. But also killing joke-wise, uh, making jokes about Donald Trump. So, you know, it's like, all right, well, what you have to do when something like this is happening is just go about your day like, you know, like it, it's everyday business. And <clears throat> I'm going to bet that every day that he's at Mar-a-Lago, President Trump probably has meatloaf and ice cream, maybe I, three meals a day. I don't know. I, I don't watch the man. Now, I, you, just because you mentioned President Obama, you know, President Obama had... Uh, how many drone strikes did he order during his administration? So, I mean, I, I, Chelsea, do you have an idea? Because I, I don't. I mean, but I, I think do remember. I don't remember. I, I couldn't tell you the number, but I do remember at some point there were seven Yemen, countries, including yeah. Yemen and yeah. in Libya, that we were we were bombing. I think that this is an opportunity, and I think some of the Democratic um, uh, campaigns have come up to say, point out what their record was on on past uh, interventions in the Middle East. But I think this is. A time to say we are on a on a on a path that presidents before both Republican and Democrat have taken us down, which is endless conflict and needless um, intervention in the name of safety. But by now, I would hope and I would love a poll on this. How many Americans really believe when we strike somebody that we are safer? And I. I Anybody want to take a guess? I, 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 like, I, I, think, really? I think a lot of Americans actually do believe that, unfortunately. Yeah, and I, I look, I'm sure if you were to, you know, list all the drone strikes, there's going to be some that, like, sure, for our troops that were in that area, they were safer after that. But as a blanket statement, no, I, I, I think that, you know, the success rate doesn't really help, you know, because you, you know, you watch the, uh, the drone strikes that, oh, we were supposed to blow up the hotel across the street. Not the orphanage. Oh, man. That's our bad. We're going to get that next <laughs> and time. The, the countless totally orphanages that are built across the street from hotels. But every time. I mean, have you, especially have, in the Middle East. Have you been to Baghdad <laughs> no, lately? That's true. There's a lovely orphanage but, there. But every time we do this and we kill people and they're civilians or you, you make people very angry and you make them you, you in, um, it enhances a culture of hate towards the United States, um, I, it's, I don't, I, I can't see how we've really, I mean, I, I would love to hear why people think that we are safer after uh, strikes like this and that we want another Afghanistan where we spend, I don't know how many trillion dollars. Right. Um, we are refusing to leave Iraq now, even though they haven't officially asked us to leave, but there yeah. was a... Uh, a little resolution that they passed saying, well, we want the United States to leave and, and the United States saying, well, we won't we, we don't want to leave unless it's on friendly terms, whatever that means, but, basically on our terms. But at the same time, isn't Pompeo saying like we, this is going to end the war in Iraq or end the conflict? And oh, yeah, because I totally believe that. Right. Exactly. I mean, like conflict that has been going on for just decades and decades and now. Now they're saying it's going to come to an end. Like that's so. Just... I, so I, I, I think it would be really smart of the Democratic Party, for all of them, even like the Amy Klobuchar's, to come out and be and, and and say this is not the right approach anymore, and to have a a new line of what it means to be conservative Republican or liberal Democrat, where, um, where the brand of conservative Republican is just bombs away, bomb kill people. And, and throw away masses amounts of money versus uh, Democrats are on the side of um, peace and diplomacy and, and safety because those are not uh, mutually exclusive concepts. Uh, and I think this is an opportunity right now for people to come out and say, even Obama was wrong. And I know people hate saying that. Joe Biden's never going to say that, but we need It depends people. on what the poll numbers say. Joe uh, Biden might say that. We need, we need people to say Obama was wrong when he did, when he bombed all, all of these countries. And we continue to be wrong in, like, you know, supporting, you know, like Saudi Arabia, who was... I don't, and I don't know if they still are, but we're, we're not. Up until too long ago, they were still bombing Yemen. So um, this is a this is a critical time where we redefine the parties can redefine what they stand for. So what, what you're saying is what you're saying is if the Democratic any Democratic candidate would criticize previous Democratic administrations, then that would help sort of bridge some sort of gap. And I actually think it would. 
quite kind of the opposite, not bridge the gap, but actually make it more uh, distinct what the two parties stand for on this issue mm -hmm. of going into wars. Because right now, Democrats say they're, that they're party of, uh, of of peace and diplomacy, and then we have Obama who didn't, you know, conducted all these strikes. So we look like hypocrites. Right. And this is the time to say, you know, that that was, that was wrong. wrong. Sure. And chart yeah. a new course. Um, and I, I, but I don't know how is that. You know, throwing Obama under the bus. I, 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 I mean, they I have. Mean, Walked back, uh, like Biden, Biden voted in favor of uh, the Iraq War. Bernie did not, but like the ones that did ha have walked that back and said they shouldn't have done that, right? Right, including Joe Biden, because he initially he he now says he was against it from day one, but then in the Senate he voted for it, and then here later is saying he was always against it. So. Yeah, I mean it's a very easy way to work around that. Is just like look, based on the intel we had. At that time, it made sense, and clearly we know now that, uh, you know, we shouldn't have uh, been in support of it. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people voted for it that uh, had to take it back. But I run think for that office. if we only critique, criticize, you know, joke about how dumb Trump is for doing this, and he is, and don't also take responsibility for the dumb moves of the previous Democratic presidents, sure. we lose credibility or at least don't gain any. Right. Uh, what do you think about the notion, uh, I'll ask you first, Chelsea, that there are obviously those who are upset that, uh, you know, this Jones drone strike is something that could, you know, it's essentially an act of war that could lead to, you know, a real conflict, and he didn't get any authorization from Congress yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I have my thoughts, but what are yours? Well, I mean, that was, you know, the, the, the renewal of the authorization of military use was just kind of included. I can't remember with what, yeah. but it was just, you know, granted to him. But it has been reauthorized every year since they first started after 9-11. Um, and it, it's just this, this thing when they have to pocket to, or patch together so many different um, bills into one to pass something, you know, by the end of the year or, you know, it becomes a, it, it, it has to pass or, you know, we have no money to continue as a country. So um, everybody can say that they're against, the, you know, reauthorizing the, the use of military force, but then it gets, you know, renewed. And so we're stuck. And so he has, you know, according to that, not violated, as I understand it, um, the law, even the or the Constitution, even though the Constitution says it, only Congress can declare war, but you know we've we've given him a loophole. Right, and also, I mean, a single dr drone strike isn't necessarily an act of war. Obviously, it is a you know a militaristic action, but it, it's not like I don't know. I mean, going back what a hundred years, it's not like you know the Bosnian leaders are like. You know, we should really check to make sure we should take out uh, Archduke Franz Ferdinand. You know, let's make sure that uh, we don't see what might happen. And just like, no, we got to get rid of that guy because we don't like him. So I can understand the idea that, like, you know, you're going to do it. You know, I mean, did Obama get clearance for drone strikes all across the board? You know, I mean, certainly. Probably you know, not. I mean, look, as as glad as I can say I am to, you know, he, to know that Osama bin Laden is dead. I mean, when you think about what that operation was and where they went and how long they were there and whether or not it was a good idea to go, no, they, you know, you probably should have checked with somebody. But at the same time, the nature of that, you really need to, you, you know, you can't have too many people in, in the inner circle on there. Uh, what do you think, Tamara, about you know, a decision like that, which, you know, look, it's all, it's it's only been a few days. So we don't really know where that goes, what the repercussions are. But do you think that there's something to be said for those making the argument that, you know, you can't just, you know, go after a general, an Iraqi general, an Iranian general, you know, uh, without checking with us first, us as in Congress, not us as in the Trump report? Us as a <laughs> they should check with us, in all honesty. But I, where'd I, our I, red phone go? That our direct line to yeah. the White House. Where is it? No, they, they, I don't. I don't see it anymore. Um, uh, without thinking about the repercussions, um, I feel in a certain say this very carefully. It's even though I absolutely do not agree with um, President Trump's. Uh, strike against Soleimani and everything that is currently the wheels that are currently turning. 
but this is almost the most normal thing that he's done uh, because of, as we've said, previous presidents also have done these, you know, are responsible for these types of attacks. Um, so because this is something that... Um, there's so much precedence for it. There's so much precedence for it. It's it's weirdly... Um, it's. I, I feel like this is the most. Yeah, the most normal thing that he has done in his presidency. And I, you know, I hate saying that because I definitely do not want to normalize, you know, violent attacks or mm -hmm. make it seem like I condone this in any way at all because I don't. But every other major thing that he's done that has made headlines has been so outrageously like kind makes absolutely field. no sense whatsoever and just the. Um, so this is like, oh, there's America. Yes. It's a, it's a thing that we do. And I wonder, I don't know if you have talked to any Trump supporters about how years ago Trump was tweeting, oh, Obama's going to start gonna a war with up. Iran. Yeah. It, it, what is their response to, like, I, yeah, it's a good question because he's just like, oh, Obama's going to start in a, war, a war with Iran, you know, to get reelected. And you, you'll see the, the, I think it's a New York Times cover that goes around a lot that as uh, Clinton's uh, impeachment was looming, there was military mm -hmm. action against Iran. So, you know, there's, there, you know, there is something to be said for like, well, let's just, uh, not focus on that so much. Let's 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 uh, get this going on yeah, over there here. There are any Trump supporters watching right now. Let us know how you reconcile those tweets about twe uh, Trump claiming that Obama was going to do something I mean, to Iran just because of the election. So he's had I for, that must have been in 2012. So he's had eight years to realize like, well, actually, that's a really good idea. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I I'm I'm so glad I thought of that for Obama, and I'm going to go ahead and and take my own advice. Uh, I feel like we'll have plenty more to talk about in this story uh, in the weeks ahead. But I did want to uh, spend a few moments on impeachment because uh, when last we left, <laughs> we were just expecting you know it was. Uh, days away, and I think that there are very specific reasons for not submitting the articles of impeachment. I mean, I think when we were talking about it, the idea was they didn't want to give them to Mitch McConnell, and then he would basically have like a, a one-day session, like a going, out no of business, a going out of business yeah. sale right before Christmas, mm -hmm. and then consider the whole thing done. Right. Uh, so what do you think now, uh, Tamara, about the idea that uh, Nancy Pelosi is still hanging on to those articles of impeachment, has yet to turn them over yet? I, unfortunately, I, I don't understand. Um, I wish I had a better idea. Every time I hear an analysis of her strategy for withholding yeah. them, I'm, I'm not fully grasping. I, I, I guess I don't fully understand, like, the process of what needs, needs to happen. The, the rules of the impeachment trial are sort of still up for debate at the moment, and she's hanging on to them until, I believe, she thinks that the rules are fair. Mm -hmm. And that means including witnesses. Right. Yes, and, and, the, and the witnesses thing, because um, I, since, um, uh, I always think of him as just Twain mustache. John What's Bolton. his name? John Bolton yeah. uh, volunteered to um, testify. And if subpoenaed, though. If, if, well, yeah, I mean, he's not going to just show up. Why not? <laughs> yeah. If I oh, I saw a photo with his sleeping bag out. Um, <laughs> he's, uh, you know, I, I, that tells me that the uh, the book deal is not finalized just yet for him. <laughs> you know, I think it's going to really depend. There's always a I bottom mean, he, line. Yeah, there has to be. Uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, I think that that's part of it. I mean, that makes sense to me that it's sort of figuring out what it is. And because there's so many questions about the rules, uh, there's you, you've got uh, Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell, uh, the brain trust uh, in the Senate, uh, over there talking about that they want to actually change the rules. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess there's uh, there's nothing against, the, you know, there's there's no reason that they can't legally do that, I assume, Chelsea. It's, well, it's not spelled out in the Constitution sure. or any other law that I know of, you know, explicitly about what the rules have to be. So I guess, you know, you're right. But, oh, my gosh, the hypocrisy. I heard McConnell made a statement of about the impeachment and said something to the effect of, with something that is so constitutional, Democrats are, you know, playing politics. And I was like, you bastard. Something so constitutional as an impeachment trial? How about something <coughs> so constitutional as appointing a Supreme Court justice that you just decided to hang out, hang off until things were of a better environment for you? Is that not the height of hypocrisy? 
to try well, and call her out for that. I mean, if we were going to try and figure out what the height of hypocrisy in Washington is, mm-hmm. I think we would have to do a lot more of okay, these but shows that would today. Be up but there. It's, it's definitely up there. It's in the Hall of Fame, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, and I guess the idea that the Republicans could hold the trial uh, and, and really without the Democrats' involvement. I mean, I guess they largely feel that that's what the House trial was, but I mean, I... I, I, the I, 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 I was going to say, well, yeah, I know, but, but I was just going to say what I saw, uh, I didn't watch that closely, but I sure saw a lot of Democrats, I'm sorry, a lot of Republicans on TV talking. So it's not like they didn't, they didn't get to talk and they weren't involved. They just, uh, you know, weren't, weren't... But yes, that wasn't a trial. Mm-hmm. But that hearing whatever uh, the investigation, as it were. So, uh, Do you I, think the Trump supporters think that the whole Iran timing has anything to do with trying to distract from the impeachment trial, or is that just the rest of us? No. Um, they don't I, really know, I, think I think that there would probably be some that, that might think about it, but they're like, nah, he wouldn't do that. You know, you, maybe you think for a second, you know, like, nah, the, the Trump's not going to do that to us. Come on. Uh, but here's the thing, because if you, your fundamental belief is that the entire impeachment thing is a scam. They're just trying to undo the election of 2016. You know, all these things that you hear, if you believe that, you're not going to think for a second that this this Iraq-Iran uh, skirmish has anything to do with that because yeah. they're like, no, no, because In this fact, is you're thinking you're probably thinking, like, isn't it great that he was able to still stand up and yeah. defend America when, when he's having to deal with all of this BS on the side? My goodness, the way well, that some I, people's I, minds I, work I, is just totally I, beyond I feel me. like it, it's fairly close to that. It's like, you know, with this distraction, thank God that he was still able to take out this, this really bad guy. Although, and I cannot believe that I'm about to say oh, this. Oh, I can't wait. Although, Tucker Carlson will agrees with at, at least this side of the panel. I'm not sure where you are on the on the uh, strike that killed Soleimani, but Tucker Carlson said it was the wrong thing to do. I've heard people say that it was the wrong thing to do. I think you've heard enough people say that, like, oh yeah, you know. I, I mean, uh, Elizabeth Warren, I think, was on the View this morning, and she's like, oh yes. no, he's a terrorist. You know, I, I know well, Megan McCain, Megan McCain was, was trying to was get trying her to, get her to, to say, say that he was a terrorist because, and I don't understand she, 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 why was she reluctant to? Well, at but first. she did say it. I think just to get to be able to make her point, she's like, yeah, yeah, of course he was. And, you know, I, I think people are – the dispute doesn't seem to be like, I can't believe they killed this great guy, you know? I mean, he and had a family. This, and what's so he infuriating, that is – I, I believe is what Fox News – I've actually seen, you know, a hardline Republican saying, oh, they, the Democrats think he's an angel. And it's like, where are you getting that? Who is who is saying that he was a good guy and didn't deserve this? No, you that's the thing. I, I don't see anybody saying it. And that's yeah. my point is no one's saying that. It's just the argument. Argument, and I've seen, I don't know about elected Republicans, but I've seen, you know, right leaning commentators. You know, I mean, I'm sure that when Rush Limbaugh was announcing his four more years today, he wasn't uh, he wasn't saying that he thought it was a bad idea. But I think that there have been those I've seen, you know, headlines and snippets and clips and things. There are people saying that they, they question the strategy. They also, you know, wonder about the whole thing. But uh, that. I mean, right now, with the 10 rockets that have been dropped, yeah. if one American troop has been killed by that, was that worth it? I, 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 I guess you'd have to ask, you know. Uh, you, you'd, you'd have to ask yeah. I, I, what I, were, know, troops. My fear is that, uh, as, as I was saying, like, what I think Trump's style is, he always wants to be the first. He always wants to be the one that plays by his own rules. And the whatever you call it, the treaty or whatever that we don't destroy an enemy's cultural cultural landmarks. Mm-hmm. I it seems so in his wheelhouse that he wants to be the first guy to do that, and that's what I'm terrified of. That his statement about that, which was something to the effect of, "I like to obey the law, but then they get to kill people." I yeah. put myself in the 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 shoes of an undocumented immigrant who comes here thinking, I generally like to follow the rules, but they're about to kill me. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm yeah. coming here. So the lines that he says, uh, you know, just transpose them to somebody else in a, in a in a different situation, but dealing with, you know, the same kinds of consequences. And, and he sounds certainly, you know, reasonable. I think most people, even those people who have come here illegally, I'm saying, I'm using air quotes, but sure, they come here illegally. They, too, generally like to follow the law, but their lives are at stake. And 
Trump wants to say that generally he likes to follow the law, except when lives are at stake. Okay, is that double speak or hypocrisy? I'm not sure which one that is. Well, I don't. I don't know how much. I, I think they go hand in hand. Uh, so just to sort of tidy up on impeachment, it, it seems like. You know, nobody's in a rush to get this thing going. I don't think Democrats uh, want to rush it. Uh, Republicans, I think some of them would like to rush it through. You know, that was the idea of trying to get it done before Christmas. But I do think that everybody's kind of re it's a it's just a long game of chess. You know, it's not like the checkers game that I think some people were hoping for. Uh, but. I, 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 don't, I, I don't like the gamification of impeachment, but I do get the idea that you want a legit trial. And, sure. And any legit trial has witnesses. Sure. So and, give us witnesses. And John Bolton is uh, more than happy to uh, say what he has to say. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I just miss his mustache, so I hope he gets to speak. But uh, also, I, I think that, uh, you know, not having witnesses, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess having witnesses just delays the inevitable where he doesn't get removed from office. But you at least still have the hearing and, and the cases get made. And I guess you can sway public opinion, even if you're not going to get any any Republican that's not, senators that's to vote. That's not what impeachment is supposed to be about. Well, it's but, what it's supposed know. to be about. Uh, I did want to talk about, you know, it's 2020. Uh, it's an election year. And uh, Chelsea, can you believe that uh, we're, it's another election year? I know we didn't start at the beginning of 2016. We started at the conventions. But uh, that means almost four years I did not that we've been that. Uh, coming in here and uh, talking about all this nonsense. It's mostly nonsense. not 100% nonsense. It's largely nonsense. I mean, very consequential yeah. nonsense, if you're yeah. really going to call it nonsense I mean, at Tamara, all. I don't know what your excuse is. We was, this was already a shit show by the time you came in here. We, I don't think we knew exactly what we were in for. But uh, I mean, no. did any of us think that we would still be breathing in the year 2020 once once Trump took office? Well, I, I mean, I know I, mean, I personally thought the United States would have been just did, destroyed in nuclear did, fallout did by now. Did we ever think we would be surrounded by this graphic that says the <laughs> Trump report, you know? Uh, I, and I, I do think no. it speaks... <laughs> Oh, please finish this well, You thought. have to finish the thought. Come on now. <laughs> the fact that we, that things uh, have not been completely ob obliterated shows how... How much f less power the United States presidency actually has than than what I had a, a thought initially when when President Trump took office? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, to some extent, it's sort of like the the great and powerful Oz. If when he wasn't looking, people took things off of his desk that he just never knew about. You know, I mean, we've heard we've heard a lot about mm. things like that. So uh, I guess now we have people that at least let things you know reach his desk. Yeah, I think though. Um, we were expecting, or I don't know if I was, but I think a lot of people were expecting visible damage, like, you know, nuclear fall, something like that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay, well, at least we're not getting that. Right. But I but think the what they long term damage. Yes. I think right, right now it's like we've got a case of termites going on mm -hmm. in the agencies, in the federal agencies, and we're not going to know the extent of the damage right. until the next administration when somebody's willing to you know, open up a lid and see all the holes. And so there is damage. And then sh whatever next Democratic <laughs> administration is going to be blamed because that's when those holes are going to be coming to fruition. Yeah, look look what you be. pointed out. Look look what you found. Yeah, look, I think it's largely, a, it's a very dysfunctional relationship. You know, I think we've all had people in our lives that you're just like, Oh, I can't believe why they're with that person, but uh, they can't see it. So uh, I think you'll you have your you know I, I think you're starting to see some of those people who you know just didn't like Hillary. They like the idea of an outsider. You know, all the different things that you hear that are just like oh, I don't know if I like anybody, but I, I don't think I like that guy anymore. And uh, I don't know. I don't see the Democrats capitalizing on those voters. They seem really focused on shoring up their base, which obviously the primaries you want to do that. But I, I don't know that anyone who's still left running, and we can count Marianne because uh, she says that her campaign is just restructuring. You know, even though no one works for her campaign anymore, uh, <laughs> is, she's just restructuring. I want to see her back in the debate stage. I would love. I don't think she needs a campaign staff for that. I would just love to see her. Bloomberg's there. still in it. 
Bloomberg's um, still in it. Bloomberg is tied with Elizabeth Warren in some polls. That, that yeah. just is and beyond me. And I cannot believe these ads, so many ads, yeah. Bloomberg and the there's Sire a, there's ads. A, there's a lot of ads by both and of them, yeah. who is advising them of these ads? They're the worst, like, just... Well, no. More so than the Bloomberg ads, the the Steyer ads. It's almost like oh, when you yeah. see a local commercial, you know, for uh, I don't know, like a car dealership, and the guy mm -hmm. who runs a car Have dealership, you been injured in he an has accident? to come in at the end, and it's like. Why, well, Tom Steyer, why are you doing your own commercials? Mm -hmm. You have enough money. You could hire one of the, the voiceover guys who do movie trailers. I mean, the, the approach of, like, let's be really stoic. and See, this is the problem, is that that kind of, you know, stoicism and go operate through, you know, just logic and focus on, you know, exactly, is what had them do well in business. But a campaign is about pe appealing to people emotionally in their core, what are their fears and what are their aspirations? And even if those ads are mm -hmm. factually correct, they bomb, they fail, they're terrible because they do nothing to anybody emotionally unless you call boredom an emotion. <laughs> <laughs> the people that that type of ad appeals to are the ones that are already voting for Trump, I believe. Like the ones that want to see the the strong father figure, stoic and in a suit. The, those those ones aren't they're not looking at the well, Democratic I, think, kind I of mean, I think some of those ads either. have like the, you know, mm -hmm. the like the inspirational like talking to the to the local folk and stuff like that. I, and I but I don't think that That's the wrong imagery. Right, I was going to say I don't think that that's necessarily Maybe you need a the, little bit of that, but sure. you need showing yourself being the leader of a large organization uh you know, cr you know, crowds of people, which is why Trump cares so much about how many well, people we think or we know we're at the um, inauguration because those kinds of imagery make a difference to the way that it strikes people visual. I mean, I, I just I it just goes to show you that no matter how much money you have, you're not a genius at everything. Yeah. Or no money. Sorry, things. money equals genius. I disagree with everything you just said. I, I mean, mean, that's clear. the more the more money you have, the smarter you are. I mean, because those, why else also, would you have that money? Those those advertisements are They're the so terrible. epitome. But also, anybody of stupid money under the age of thirty five is not seeing those anyway. Like the. Well, because they're not out on Twitch. I don't yeah, know. Is that, they're not. Is that, a, is that a young person reference? I, I just took a stab in the dark. They're not hey, seeing uh, Ryan commercials. Hey, Ryan at the booth, you're, what, 23? <laughs> I'm young, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you yeah, see do commercials? You see, do you see commercials, uh, campaign commercials? for Specifically, we're talking about Mike Bloomberg and Tom Steyer, but do you feel like you, you're exposed to those, or is that not how you consume I your media? I haven't seen either of theirs. Yeah. Oh. So, no, because I figured, like, you know, especially because, you know, look, let's be honest, you, you work a, a full-time job. If Final you're going to watch break, shows... I, I was home for two weeks, didn't see a single one. Well, because so that, that's in watching. Pennsylvania, right? Delaware. S Delaware. Oh, do you see, you see, that's the difference. That is the difference. Have you yeah. seen any campaign commercials? Um, I've seen Instagram ads. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's and, a, that and those are for because I would imagine that it's Bernie and Warren that are targeting like a younger demographic. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, not to get too deep into politics, but just do you follow any candidates on social media? Because I do. Okay, because then that that would actually target you, I think, a mm -hmm. little bit. So, uh, yeah, but sense. I think that that makes the point about these expensive, you know, expensive to us, but not expensive to Tom Steyer or Michael Bloomberg. Yeah. You know, to them, it's like nothing. You know, it's like it's like the lunch budget for an afternoon to do a, a month of commercials. Yeah. But I, I, yeah, so I don't know who they're reaching. And yes, it is. I guess they're they're recording for older voters. Uh, I can't believe I'm the older voter. <laughs> I mean, I'm certainly an older voter. You know, compared I mean, to yeah, but me? No. <laughs> yeah, I know you shouldn't be. Hey, four years ago you weren't an older voter, but look what happens. Uh, times change. I'm, it's uh, uh, so, uh, oh, I but I mean, do younger That's voters copyright. vote in primaries? Ryan, are you going to vote in the primary? for Delaware? I did vote in the primary. I sent an absentee ballot. Yeah. All wow. right. So you see, good, good for you. you. All right. So that, that like makes it. that point. All and right. And I'll mention Julian Castro uh, endorsed Elizabeth Warren. He did. And, so, and now people are saying there should be a Warren Castro ticket. And I'm like, no, people. But that's no. Well, so why not? Wait, why, why is I that think, a bad ticket I to you? I think that the reason why they uh, want that is because, you know, to have a Latino man sure. be. And, uh, and, you know, I, as a half Mexican, should be like, yes. But I think it's just too obvious of a, um, 
I was just talking about how Bloomberg and Steyer don't understand imagery, and then, but this is like too far on the other side with the imagery, where you want the look yeah. of a diverse mm. ticket, but, 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 but just, but just. No, because it's just playing into the identity politics thing that I, I and I and I and I disagree I mean, with. Um, I, I think Julian I think Castro Hester. could be a, you know a more viable uh, running mate if you know his campaign his individual campaign had made some kind of impact. You know what I mean? I don't I I don't think that. I, I don't. I'm not quite sure how he was in this long, in all honesty. But uh, you know, I think I, that I think it's his long, long history yeah, in in, that's in politics. But you know, even I, 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 I disagree with the notion of decriminalizing crossing the border illegally. Right. Um, and I, if I disagree with that, you know, more independence and anybody writer leaning than me is going to find him re reprehensible. Even though I'm, I know that he has done so much good, but that. That is what he has branded himself with, and I understand. He's you know, against why. decriminalizing crossing. No, he he want he. I heard him say in the debates, and you know, because I I don't know if somebody's going to say that's not what he stands for. But what I came away with is that he wants to de decriminalize, or to knock it from a uh, a felony to a misdemeanor. So in some degree, right. make it mm -hmm. less consequential if you come over the border illegally. That is that's that's not. That's not going to help the situation. And actually, something would have that would have been a great question for him to answer if he had been in the last debate, and I know we got to go, but one of the best questions that was asked in the last debate, which I'm sure you don't even remember anything about, but was a question that was asked to Amy Klobuchar, and she gave a terrible answer. And the question was, what do you tell white Americans who are uncomfortable with the idea of becoming a minority in this country? And her answer was to say, this is America, get over it, which was based. That's a, that, that sounds like an Amy Klobuchar you, answer, because it's a you terrible cannot, answer. You yeah. cannot tell people to get over their feelings. Right. No, absolutely. If Julian Castro had been asked that question and had a really thoughtful response that showed some kind of understanding or empathy for the people that do feel uncomfortable, uh, the white people, about becoming an, a minority in their country, that maybe would have um, helped him quite a bit to where I would say, you know what, a, uh, a Castro VP you know, idea is a good one, but at this point, no. All right, we do have to go, but there are a couple of comments from the chat. I just always wanted to shout out a few of the people. Uh, Stuart Jarrett Resident points out, if Christian had voted for Trump, there would be a red phone on your table. Uh, you got me, Stuart Jarrett Resident. I was an Evan McMullen guy through and through. Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, and let's see, Mike C. The Democrats have said, if you watch other news feeds or online channels that isn't on your side of the aisle, uh, I guess they're recommending that the president will not be impeached from office and he will be reelected. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's uh, I'm not quite sure what that was in response to, in all honesty, but uh, it, it was from a little while ago. But I do like to uh, mention the people in the chat. Thanks Thank to everybody you. who's I there. Love people We've been away for a while. And, uh, thanks Respectful, to everybody who found us. Thoughtful. Yeah. Comments. Thank well, you. yeah, there's somebody who had the block. But other than that, oh, it's always yeah. fun. Uh, we will be back, I believe, Tuesday night, maybe 9 Pacific. We'll uh, follow us on Twitter and we'll let you know. But where can people do that? Uh, Chelsea, where can people keep in touch with you? At Chelsea Glacia. And Tamara. Uh, at hey Tamara underscore, and I'll be at Commerce Casino this Sunday. Hey, hey. all right, and I'm at Christian DMZ, and uh, I will be sure to let everybody know exactly when you can find our show on Tuesday, but it will be after the debate, either on Tuesday or Wednesday. But until then, thanks, everyone. Happy New Year. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.